Okay, what I've got here is I've got air that's extracted from uh, the jet, okay, um, to for cabin cooling. Okay, so we pull the air out, uh, and then it goes through a heat exchanger, okay, where uh, it dumps heat to the ambient, okay, and then it expands through a turbine at 80%, okay, and then whatever's left over, it's cool air, it's dumped into the cabin at a rate of uh, 2 kilograms per second. So what I want to figure out is how much work is the turbine producing, and then how much is Q out, basically how much heat is dumped uh, to the surrounding. So what I'm going to go do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to find for air all of these values here. So again, as long as I know my temperature, I should be able to find H uh, without uh, much trouble. Okay, so we'll start here at state 1 at 400 kilograms, not kilograms, 400 Kelvin. You can see that my H value is 400.98. Okay, so H is 400.98, okay? Then at state two, is the turbine. Now, not only am I gonna need to know H2, but again, to deal with the turbine, I need to deal with the isentropic efficiency. And remember, I basically, I know my pressure ratio here. It's basically two and a half. So I'm gonna use the pressure ratio along with the relative pressure ratio to figure this stuff out. So at H2, I'm at 325. 325 is right here. H is 325.31. Okay. And PR is 1.8345. Okay. So this is uh, 325.31. And then PR2 is 1.8345. Okay. Now, coming across here, again, I know my pressure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use PR3S over PR2 equals P3 over P2. And then from that, I can find PR3S. Okay. PR3S. Again, this would be for the isentropic case going across this turbine, right? Again, I know PR2, I know P2, P3, so I can calculate PR3S, and from that calculation, again, with the 2.5 factor, I get 0 0.7335. Okay, so this is 2.5 times less than PR coming into it, again, because I've got that pressure ratio of you know, 1 over 2.5. Okay? So then from this, I can go ahead and look up H3S. So let's go ahead and do that point. 7338, uh, there it is. Uh, just a little bit above what I have here. Okay, so I can do my interpolation. Uh, it'll be just a smidge above the 250, so it's actually 250.13, because again, I'm at 0.7332, so just barely above that. So I'm just barely above that, and I get 250.13. Okay, then the fact that I know my turbine efficiency is 80%. So I know that my turbine efficiency is defined as H2 minus H3, right? The actual performance of the turbine over, oops, that's not the okay, over the ideal performance of the turbine. Again, this is 80%. From this, I can calculate that the actual H3 is 265.15. So again, now I've set H1. H2 and H3. Okay. Now I can calculate whatever it is I'm trying to find. I know the mass flow rate, so I can easily find the work in the turbine to be that mass flow rate times, again, that will be um, H2 minus H3. Okay. Again, the mass flow rate is 2 kilograms per second, and I get 120.3. For the mass flow rate, I'm sorry, not for the mat, for the work of the turbine. Okay. The other thing I'm trying to do is find the heat transfer out. Okay. And that would be uh, Q out 
is basically the mass flow rate times, again, H1 minus H2. Which equals 151.34 kilowatts out. Okay. So again, I mean, with these gas refrigeration cycles, all we're really looking for is, and we look up our H values, we do this for air, and then you find your delta H's. So again, this is really not very different from uh, any of the problems that we've done, you know, in the last several chapters. 